I'm searching the web for the latest gaming news. Searching GameZillaMedia.com, downloading headlines. Alexander, what about this monster story of yours? Download complete. Accessibility and difficulty. Develop. What's going on here? Okay, like this is this is a, a subject that really was it earlier today we saw this break on social media like the conversation was going around we did yeah. about we got games a, being too hard again yeah we got a game again that we have a game that just came out in um it's a souls born uh style game from from software and it's called uh is it Sekiro? Something like that. Sekiro. Sekiro. That sounds like, right. I don't know. It's, in, like it's in front of me, but I can't read. So. I don't play this game. Okay. So I've played Born. I've played um, uh, oh wow, Bloodborne, and I've played Dark Souls, but I have not played this new game. But it's, it's the same idea. It's a very difficult game, and it has technically no easy mode. And that's what started this whole thing. People claiming this game needs an easy mode. And the interesting point was developers coming out and saying that accessibility and difficulty options are no threat to the artistic vision of their projects. And I think, so there's positivity to this, and then there's just some, just some, some discussion to be had here. But the positivity is, is the outcry from the community and from the developer side of just, not outcry, sorry, the support, I should say, of, of a lot of these people. So people like, uh, Corey, uh, Corey Barlog, which is the director of God of War, he tweeted, accessibility has never and will never be a compromise to my vision. So uh, you know, people coming out, big names coming out, uh, director of Bayonetta coming out and saying that putting, um, putting in a one button mode called easy automatic in Bayonetta didn't make getting pure platinum any easier and it didn't ruin any experience. And basically, it led to himself and others in the team receiving many comments from new Bayonetta fans who could have never otherwise enjoyed the game. Interesting. And then my last one, my last like quote would be: "Your enjoyment of a single-player game is not affected by how another person chooses to experience that same video game." And that's Steve Spoon, uh, COO of Able Gamers. So a lot of people. Close like we're so close. That, that's a couple different sides of the coin, right? Because right. we have Corey from God of, God of War saying accessibility has never and will never compromise my vision. So like I took that as him saying like I'm not concerned with how accessible ga this game is. I'm gonna make my game. No, it's is, it, am I am I reading like that's the way I'm reading that. Yeah, your reading is super wrong. Everybody, you, so all these comments came after Corey's, okay. like, praising Corey. Corey's basically saying that like he'll never let. He'll never let uh, accessibility not be a priority because of his vision. Oh, okay. It's, it's kind of how he's looking at this. Because I, so, I was totally reading it the other way. Well, he's, he's like, I'm going to make my game no. and uncompromising. Right. No, no. So, and so, like, the, the uh, I'm sorry, the Bayonetta comment and even the Able Gamers comment were in response to Corey's tweet. Sure. And so... Um, there's been a lot of there's a lot of support, a lot of praise, uh, you know, about these people coming on saying this, and it all revolves around the fact that this new game doesn't have an easy mode, and it kind of led us to sit here and want to talk about. First of all, good on all these developers. These are some of the biggest developers, you know, uh, out there right now. I mean, God of War winning game of the year and and everything. Um, you could play God of War in a way that was very easy, so you could just go enjoy the game. You could just go enjoy the story, and realistically, you were going to beat the game, or you could make it incredibly hard to the point where like it got to that point where I'm like uh, halfway through the game I'm going to change my setting because it was just too much so there you go the game of the year had the ability to flex like that on the fly throughout the game got to a boss couldn't beat it died 30 times in a row drop it down to easy push through the game come back and try it on a hard later if you want that was the style and that's what all these people are saying but this new game doesn't have that and people want it so the it came into the question is does every game need an easy mode and i think we've already answered the one question is that it's okay to play a game on easy mode like it's okay to have easy like i don't think there's a game that exists that by having options it's bad i just don't so then the question of should every game have easy mode? I, sure. I think the real question is, or, or the real statement is, just give me options. 
It doesn't have to be easy. Just let me have flexibility. See, I, I am I am all for an easy mode if that's how someone wants their game to be played. I would imagine there's developers that just, you know, from software probably doesn't want you to have an easy time. They want you to have a hard time. They want their game to be a challenge. And maybe that's like part of the thrill of them designing this game is they, they want it to be hard more than they want you to be immersed in the story. That, that it, it just might play into what the motivation of the actual studio making the game is. So here comes the next the next piece, though, is because most of these people thought in a very broad way of just like, oh, well, you just need to get good, right? Just get good. Yeah. If we, we, hear, we hear that all the time in gaming. Sure. Negatively and just and and just whatever, even supporting each other, like get good, like get better, practice, whatever. But here we are, and let's add in the factor of like there are certain people that cannot play Dark Souls, Bloodborne, and and this new game. <laughs> can't do it. I can't do it. I can't play those games. They are too hard. But I mean, there's also people that literally can't play that game physically. Well, that's true. And so you have to, at that point, with with comments from able gamers and stuff like that, you know, people like the Bayonetta, the Bayonetta developer coming up with a one button mode. You literally only had to push one button and move your character around. That was it. So you could enjoy the story of Bayonetta. Like that's the even God of War. You could take it down to an easy mode, and yeah, there was still a lot of buttons, but. Overall, it made the game pretty pretty easy, where you could you could you know at least enjoy a an amazing story, and so it leads me to believe like yeah you know what, build some trophies or build some achievements that are around that that you're gonna get around to the point of like you're not gonna get the platinum in this game unless you can beat it you know uh, at the highest level, but there shouldn't be a wall saying, you know oh I'm sorry you have a disability. I'm not going to give you an easy mode, you know, like, and at the same time, I'm not saying every, I'm not saying it needs to be a requirement. I'm not saying like the industry needs to say like, if you don't have an easy mode, we're not publishing your game. Like, I don't want that. I want, I want there just to be a level of respect. I just want there, I just want there to be, you know, people like good people are out there, you know, Corey and, and all them that we're talking about that understand it. Bill Spencer and, and Xbox doing what they're doing with the adaptive controller. You know, like there's a lot of cool things out there that maybe someone could use that controller and some and some hookups and still beat Dark Souls on an incredibly difficult situation and, and setting, and that's great for them and that's a great story. But if someone is super into that franchise and they love the world and they love the characters, should they not have the ability to enjoy it? You know, like that's like uh, a great example I read today. They brought up movies, okay. And you can go into a theater, and it can be uh, subtitles, right? Because you can't hear. You're not going to get the full experience of the movie. We already know that. They're mm -hmm. not going to get the music. They're not going to get the sound effects. But they're going to be able to read the dialogue, and they're going to be able to enjoy it to the level that, they, that they're able to enjoy it. And, and hopefully, that, like, to them, that's, that's what they want. That option's there for them. That, you know, like, and, and so like, that's, that's a great... Like, it's not a video game, but it's still a it's an entertainment piece that I really liked that comparison because yeah, they are tech you know, it is unfortunate they're missing out on certain things that they can't that there is no way really for us to share with them, but they still have a way to enjoy it. And that's that's important to me. So I don't know. I look at this and I don't I don't negatively look at from software. Like this is not something where I'm mad at them because they don't have an easy mode. But it is something where I'm like, I would like I would prefer it. When I see it, I I commend those people for, for do going the extra, taking that extra step and developing, you know, that extra mode for people. I, I guess there's it, it it's interesting because from software is actually such a unique position because their studio's reputation is, is built on making games that are hard. Yeah. Where you would think financially Again, we're talking back, back to our last topic. We're talking about how you make the most money. More people can play your game. You're going to sell more copies of your game. True. Like the, that, from a business standpoint, makes a lot of sense. I, I think there's people maybe a little bit older than us, and we're really on like that cusp because we were raised on the NES that want to go, video games used to be hard, damn it. Well, they used to be hard because they were arcade ports that were meant to steal all your quarters. Yeah. Uh, you know, there's that part where kids these days are too soft. Everything's too easy for kids these days. And I'll agree. There, sh there. I love when a video game has some difficulty. It has uh, a, a learning curve. But at the same time, 
I wouldn't want some kid. I, I guess I just have like a heart for the kids on this one because it was a grown up screw them. <laughs> some kid who really wants to play a game and because of a challenge or them. I'm bad at video games. I should be able to relate to this because I can. Just a reason like that's just too hard for me, but I'm really interested in that video game. Yeah. Like, let's just because this is all I'm going to talk about for the next two months, probably. Let's say what if Mortal Kombat 11 got released where you could only play online, where I'm just playing against other people that are destroying me. Yeah. That that would be like a from software version of a fight game. It would be too hard. I would never actually get good enough. How do you start when you're picking up a new character in a fighting game? You play a tower or you play an arcade mode on easy or yeah. on medium, depending on what your skill level is. Yep. And you learn the character. So there's that aspect where it makes sense to have a way to experience the game for more people. Financially, it makes sense. And I think it's good for gamers. You know, I think there's always going to be those games out there that, are intentionally hard or are pressing that, hey, some people are going to get left out. I'm fine with it. I get left out of those games. Again, I have I tried playing Bloodborne. It was way too hard for me. I wasn't having fun. I stopped playing it after about three hours. Yeah. So there's going to be some experience you get left out on, but I think more gamers being able to enjoy a game is better for the publisher, better for the developer, and better for gaming fans. Yeah, and then my last statement on this, too, it shifts to the players. For the people that are out there that have been complaining about this idea because it it uh waters down their achievement it's a single player game and and the statement once again is your enjoyment of a single player game is not affected by how another person chooses to experience that same video game okay ceo of able gamers don't sit there and limit other people because you can sit there and say i beat dark souls and then someone else can say, yeah, I beat Dark Souls too." And then you have to worry if they beat it on easy and you didn't. Like, who cares? Well, you know what you achieved. Mm -hmm. Enjoy what you achieved and stop always, always comparing it to everyone else. That is not the point, especially of a single player game. You're not playing Fortnite trying to kill the other 100 people and be the best. You're literally just trying to beat a game that is a challenge for you. And like outside of that, if someone walks up and says, yeah, I beat it too, it was great, then enjoy it and share that this cool moment that you're going to have about being able to talk about a video game that you both played. Who cares? We have a lot. There's a lot of people in this world that are very little people, and they, yes. they need that. They need to get off on the fact that they did something better than you or, they, you know, like, oh, well, you didn't actually beat the game because you played it on easy. Right. Like, that's, it's just, that's sad. Here, here's an example that I want to bring up that I know you and I have both had frustrations with, but at the same time, I'm really glad it exists. Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has a steering assist and an acceleration assist, assist mode that makes it harder to fall off the edges of courses, yep. and it makes it where you know, you auto break a little bit on the turns. It, it helps you. So Grim and I don't play with that mode on because we, we've been playing Mario Kart since like 1992 or whatever. Right. We want the pure experience. We want to prove our skill to one another when we're playing Mario Kart against one another. When I'm playing with my wife, <laughs> she just wants to beat me. Yep. She yep. doesn't want to get frustrated falling off the edge. She doesn't want to deal with that, so she leaves the steering assist on, and guess what? That means I get to play video games with my wife, and we both have fun because I love trying to beat her knowing that she has the handicap, and I, I still got to find a way to beat her with that, and she's having fun because she's not getting frustrated. She's enjoying the experience. You take that one step further, I have a four-year-old nephew who I can turn motion controls, uh, steering assist, acceleration assist on. I can be a 30-year-old man playing against a four-year-old kid. The four-year-old kid is having fun. I'm having fun. No one's frustrated. Yeah. So that's an example of where this can become accessible and more people can enjoy the game. It's a great point. It's a very good point. We're going to move on with that.